Okay, so let's start building out this character. Um, I'm going to begin with the, the head of the character just because uh, that's something that's always helped me as I've been working, whether it's been in illustration or in 3D. Um, I think it just has something to do with being able to empathize with what it is that you're building. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to create um, a little bit more of a skull shape uh, to walk you through what I just did really fast. Sorry, I didn't even explain what I was doing. Okay, so I'm going to start by bringing out just this line of vertices towards the front of the face. Um, so I'm just, just if, this, if my skull were a round piece, I'm bringing out the vertices that would be here right up to there. So I'll just bring those forward, and then I'm going to bring the base of the skull, which as you, like, as you can tell, it's not actually a full circle. Uh, the base of the skull actually comes up quite high. So I'll just bring that right up. And I will also just scale in these vertices a bit. So sort of narrow that head, so create a bit more of a, um, I don't want to say egg shape, but narrow oval. There you go. I'm also going to bring this line of vertices at the bottom up quite a bit. So what I'm doing here, besides just rounding out the base of that skull a bit, is I want to create what is going to be this line. When I actually finish, actually flesh out the model, it'll be this line that goes from uh, where am I basically just under, where, about bisecting my ears underneath my cheekbones through where the muscles of the mouth crisscross. So you see that there's like a little bit of a shadowy dimple area there. So cut that line straight through and right into the corner of the mouth. That's where that's gonna be eventually. Um, so in the meantime, I do, can just sort of prepare for that now uh, by building in that line there. And then I'm going to extrude, so pull down the jaw area. Just as a reminder, the shape I'm using here, all this is is a, is a cube that's been smoothed. So I just create a polygon cube, um, create polygon primitives cube, and scaled that down because that cube is huge. And I just smoothed that. So I just went to mesh and smooth. And that's it. That creates this really cool uh, rounded low poly shape, which is super easy to manipulate. Manipulate, if I were articulating correctly. So um, I'm just going to extrude a jaw down, and again, all I want, um, this is just character proportions, I just want to bring that shape out, and I'll stop there. Eventually I will use it as the basis of my um, character facial modeling, but not today. I scale that in, shift that forward, and that works if I rotate it up. If I don't rotate it up, it stays this weird kind of pinched thing, which just and it looks like a robot from the early Star from the um, not early uh, first Star Wars movies. And the more we can avoid ever having anything to do with those first Star Wars movies, the better. Not the original Star Wars movies, not movies four, five, and six, but the movies that came out later, movies one, two, and three. They were just a waste of my time and a waste of yours, I imagine. Anyways, okay, so um, this character is looking a little bit narrow in the face. Let's just flesh that out a little bit, and I think our jaw can come up quite a bit more because I have overcompensated. I dropped the jaw down to that um, chin line, which is suggested by Andrew Loomis, when what I should have done is kept the jaw in proportion and just scaled up the head, which would have which is a much better solution for that. Um, never actually artificially elongate a body part uh, or part of the character just to meet your proportion guides. You are much better scaling it proportionally. I'm gonna bane out about that this entire time. Proportion is king. Okay, so next up, let's do the torso. And if I get through any point where I do like lots and lots of modeling and I'm just sort of awkwardly silent, rather than having you sit here and watch me be awkwardly silent, I'll just speed the video up, <laughs> which is good for both of us. I'll be less embarrassed. You do have to watch me drink hot chocolate, apparently. It's really good hot chocolate. It's made with coconut milk. It's delicious. Okay, so let's do the torso. All I've done, by the way, is I just 
took that original shape I created earlier and duplicated it, so Control D on my keyboard. And I'll just keep duplicating them as I need them. Um, so that's the whole reason why that's there. Okay, let's sort of line this torso up. And over here on the Loomis model, you see that um, we've got this. It widens at the collarbone and the shoulders, but it's not as wide as the full width of the rib cage. So just below where it's going to fit in to the armpits. So my width of the rib cage, width of the rib cage, <laughs> width of my rib cage is quite wide, whereas when the rib cage comes up and sits into the collarbones, it narrows, um, just as it narrows as it comes down to the waist. Another reason why this shape is so um, so damn useful. So just looking at my guide here, it suggests that. Um, just as there's a line right below the chin, the next line down should be at about where the nipples are. So if I were to pretend that this line of edges in the middle of this shape were nipples, um, or it's going to be where the nipples are going to be, then this is pretty much where I want that cube to sit. And let's just start doing some modifications. I might scooch that in a little bit and curve it out. Not a lot, just a little. And I think I'll tilt that back slightly because your upper torso is tilted. Um, you can kind of see it in the uh, side view of the Loomis photo here where you can see that the base of the front of his ribs is sort of um, up on an angle and then the back of his ribs is lower down on, lower, on his lower back. So, <laughs> trying to figure out where my hands are in relation to the camera. Hey, it's like they took a thing and sort of it were all <laughs> straight up and down and it just kind of went and just tilted it slightly. Let's also widen this to create that, um, start creating that shape of the top of the rib cage. And we can do the same thing down here at the bottom, but remembering that um, halfway down, so just here where the full width of the rib cage below the armpits, it should be significantly wider. Um, another thing that I can do is, now I do believe that we can actually bring up this um, interior line quite a bit and try and start to fake uh, these incredibly cool muscles here. We're just going to fake them. We're not going to go into great crazy detail uh, because that comes in later for the rest of the modeling phases. I wonder if we can just get away with scaling up the whole thing. No, no. We'll go back to having uh, that interior line increased. Um, I can quickly select a whole line of edges. If I select one vertice, hold down shift and double click the next vertice, and you'll see I just grabbed an entire line at the same time. It makes life so easy. Okay. It's At some point I'm going to need to throw some shoulders in here if I'm going to be able to see what I'm doing. It's very, very easy to just kind of get stuck modeling a character. Um, or focusing on one body part, but you can't just do one body part at a time. Like, body parts are in proportion relation to each other. If you don't have other body parts there to gauge your proportions, you're going to get it wrong. So let's bring a shoulder in. Too big. And um, so I'm looking again here, and I can also switch back to my muscular anatomy. So... That shoulder, it's like, again, you took this rounded shape and you just sort of tilted it slightly. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to tilt that. And the shoulder in these images is quite a long muscle. Like, it's not, it's not rounded like a sphere. Um, it's sort of, if, especially if you look in the side view here, it's a bit wider at the top and it narrows at the bottom, but it's almost like a teardrop, like an upside down teardrop shape. So I will modify this slightly. I'll lengthen that. And I'll grab these vertices at the bottom and I'll just narrow those as well. In fact, I can sort of narrow the whole thing. So to create a little bit more of that teardrop shape. 
and let's go back to our little Loomis guide. So those shoulders, clavicle, that should all really line up quite tightly. I might bring that down just slightly then and see if I can't get a, a bit of a better line. Um, okay, let's get that into position. Switch back to our anatomy. So, right sort of like, ah, you're in my way, Sphere. Go away. So right from the base of the skull, it, it should be quite a bit wider. So it looks like it's almost a little over half the size of the skull. So I'll widen that slightly. And I think the my chest is probably a bit too wide as well. So I might narrow that a bit. Maybe even curve it a little, like tilt it a little bit more. So now that I have that shoulder in, I can start to look at that shoulder in relation to the chest and start seeing areas where the silhouette of my chest just doesn't look right in relation to that shoulder. That's why having those other body parts are so crucial to your modeling because you're going to be able to make much better decisions. So I'm gonna flare these vertices out just a little bit. Um, so you'll see that the pectorals here are flared out quite wide. In fact, when we actually do our, our edge loops, we're not gonna do pectorals and just do edge loops like right here, hell no. Those pectorals actually stretch all the way out into the shoulders. So we're gonna to wanna to build our edge loops all the way out to there. And I'll start just start the process of thinking about that by um, capturing as much of that in this proportions model as I can. And then it narrows quite a bit, but let's see if we can just get away with widening that just a bit more. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's get the lower torso happening. So this is one of my favorite shapes to create. What we're gonna do is, I'll just scale this up a little bit. And you'll notice I'm only, um, with like my arms and stuff, I'm only bothering to model one side of the character at a time at the moment because um, I can I can mirror it across. Okay, scale that in, and we'll scale that in, and let's just get that into place. It's too big. line our next thing up a bit with the belly button. I have just decided that my belly button is here. That interior line of vertices. I'm gonna, I, I will always try and use uh, the edge flow to simulate these, these lines on the body as much as possible. Simulate, capture. I think I went entirely too cray cray scaling in this line of interior vertices because I've really lost my silhouette. So let's scale that out again. I don't think that's gonna hurt anything at all. And I do believe we can probably afford to bring, like really flare out that rib cage a bit. Okay, now let's start doing some interesting things here. I'm going to raise this line of vertices up and bring them out. And I'll go back to my chest and I will just bring these vertices out and down to compensate. And I don't, I don't really need to line them up perfectly right now. Um, I just want to get kind of close, a bit, a bit of an approximation. A bit better than nothing. A bit better than a whole lot of nothing. That line of interior verts can come up as well. And you can see where we're really going to be able to cannibalize 
a lot of this proportion guide. I mean, you can already see where we could just um, combine these two objects, stick them together, and actually have that work really well for our edge flow. Um, rather than scale those out, I might scale these in. Alright, starting to look okay. I think it's got quite a bit more work needed, really. But I want to throw a few more body parts in there before I go too, um, too crazy, because I'm very conscious that I can, uh, I can, I can make decisions that are not smart. They're like, they're not made in context of the other body parts, which is what I'm really trying to avoid. Um, so there's your lower torso. Let's get a neck in there because this looks really weird without a neck. All right, so for the neck, I like to use um, a cube, uh, just a couple of cubes, and I'll just add one insert, one insert edge loop to sort of round it out. So I'll go create polygon primitives cube, and scale that right down, scale that right up. Doesn't need to be that long. Get that into position. And what I'm going to try and do here is this is a really interesting thing that happens um, with the with the neck front and back. So what you got is here in the back of the head, you'll see that it narrows at the top and then flares out quite dramatically into um, the shoulders. And at the front, it flares in the top and narrows as it reaches the clavicle. So we get sort of a really interesting opposing shape happening. So I will just sort of create that flare now. So narrow uh, where it meets the head and then it flares out. I think that can probably come in a little bit. I have gotten a little bit too, gotten a bit too excited there. Um, and Let's duplicate that and create the alternative shape where, no, bring me back my vertices, flares in at the bottom and it's quite wide where neck meets head. I think we can probably tilt that a little bit better as well. And we can do some really cool stuff as well if we choose to just drop a line of edges in there. So I'll insert edge loop on the neck here. And I will also, while I have that um, edge line, line of edges selected, I will just scale that out so that we've got a bit of a, a bit of width, thickness to that neck, and I will do exactly the same thing here on the back of the neck. We can line that, those edges up a bit better, I think. the same thing, getting a little bit more thickness. And now that I've got a bit more thickness on these objects, I can also move them together a bit closer. And one more thing that I want to do is just sneak a little bit of um, a bit of a curve of the spine in there, just a tiny bit. Just a hint. Again, I really don't want to actually model. That's for a later stage, but I will start to get um, some of the basic shapes in there. All right, so he's got a neck now. And um, having that neck really highlights how much that upper torso doesn't look right. So let's see if we can't do something about that before we go much further. I think I will 
rotate that slightly more. And we don't actually need that coming out of his head. Let's widen that slightly. There's only so much you can do um, before you actually have to get in and start modeling properly. We're going to get away with as much as we can for as long as we can before hitting that stage. All right, so that's looking a bit better. It does mean I need to bring up that shoulder now, and I might need to adjust that shoulder in relation to the rest of the body as well, um, now that I've done quite a bit to it. Okay. I'm pretty happy now with where that's at. Okay, so before we move into the lower body, I might build out his arm a little bit more. Now, the arm's really interesting because you know, just slapping a cylinder on there isn't quite going to do it. Um, the arms actually build up. Like you can, you can see that so clearly here. The arms actually built up of these muscles that have been combined in sort of like um, equal and opposite positions. Like you've got one turned uh, positive, the other one turns negative. Like you always have these groupings of muscles which are um, sitting in opposition to each other. And that opposition is what allows for a lot of really interesting movement in the human body. So you've got, for example, you've got this um, sort of elongated rounded shape here, and then you've got one in an, an opposing angle on the back of the arm. Uh, so let's build a couple of those shapes. And I might actually just reuse the shoulder here. And we'll just lengthen that. And because I haven't frozen transforms, I can actually come in here and just change its rotation back to a nice clean zero space rotation. And let's make that the front of the arm. By the way, if you're wondering how I made that happen, I just hit control A on my keyboard a couple of times until I get the channel box. And in that channel box, I can just enter exact values if I want to get very specific about where, um, about my transit translations, rotations, scale, etc. So the other thing you'll notice as I model is that I'm modeling this character in what would be called an A pose. So it's like an A pose has the arms flared out and a bit of an A, as opposed to T pose, which is your Jesus pose. Um, uh, which is great if you're modeling Jesus, but it's only good if you're modeling Jesus because um, all your if you're if you're modeling in that position, all your edge flow is set up for that, which means your edge flow is set up for your muscles in a very scrunched state, like it's they're all sort of bunched up up here. Um, whereas if you're modeling for more of an A pose, you're modeling a much more relaxed position, so you're going to get a um, a very good average point. This is where your muscles aren't fully relaxed. It's not fully extended. It's not fully contracted. They're just sort of like in a, this really good neutral position, which means your character shouldn't deform badly. It shouldn't, it shouldn't like warp too much as you're animating it. Okay, let's get that muscle happening. Let's bring our muscular anatomy back into the corner there because it's going to just make life easier for me to look at that while I'm working. Uh, this is the longest video I've put up to date. Oh my god. So that, uh, I'm looking for where this part of muscle ends. And it looks like it ends just above that um, navel line. So mine would be entirely too long at the moment. So let's just narrow that narrow, decrease the length of that, I think would be a better way of saying it. Or maybe not. Maybe that actually was exactly what I wanted. 
Again, I'm, I'm pretending like I've got uh, this navel here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a freaking navel. It's going to make my life easier. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to select that vertice. And I'm going to go to... I'm looking for chamfer, chamfer vertex. Here we go. Bam. <laughs> and that basically splits that vertice such that you end up with a face at the center of it. And now I have a freaking navel. So I can just go, there you go. There's my, there's my navel line. I'll make decisions and judgments based on the placement of the navel. Okay, so I've got the, um, that front muscle happening there. Let's just tilt that forward a little bit. And I think we can afford to flare out the space of the shoulder just slightly. We don't need to go too nuts with it. And all I'm going to do to create the back of the arm now is just duplicate that same shape, rotate it into a bit of an opposition, um, move it up, scale it in, and I really want to lengthen that. If you look at the back of the arm there, it's quite long, that muscle. Such a cool muscle, too. And I'm just trying to get it as close as I can make it useful. And I'll just keep rotating. I'm not gonna go crazy with like modeling now. I just wanna rotate this into place, really. That's what I'm after. Okay. That's looking pretty cool. And the silhouette's strong. Like I'm, I'm gonna move around the, um, frequently move around my character and just look at the silhouette, look at um, the shape of that character in space, and that's going to tell me a lot more as to whether or not I'm on the right track with uh, how I'm modeling this character. Now that I've got more of a back of the arm, I can also flesh out um, his back a bit more and make that a little bit more accurate. See, I'm like, man, you could just get such cool shapes with such simple objects so fast. And you don't get that this quickly. Doing edge loops, the, you know, like with box modeling or whatever bullshit. Sorry. Can you tell how I feel about box modeling? Or cylindrical modeling? Bah! I've done a lot of modeling over the last 10 years and I've gone through all of the techniques. It's like, you'll find cylindrical modeling, you'll find box modeling, you'll find patch modeling. And I've gone through all of them too. And um, bloody hell, so, so many of them are just such bollocks. Uh, it's just not very effective in terms of getting good proportional characters. They're very effective at getting weird warped out of proportion characters, you know, if that's what you want. I'm gonna start a war. I'm gonna. People are gonna flame me. Just wait. YouTube comments are gonna be filled like, "Oh my God, who, who's this? Who's this chick talking about flat, like slagging off box modeling?" Okay. Upper arms happening. Looking pretty cool. Let's get some elbow action going on. And we will. We're gonna keep this elbow pretty boring. Like, it's mostly gonna be a sphere. It will be a sphere for a very long time. So we've got elbow sitting. It's almost like the base of the elbow is where the navel is. Let's check out Loomis. What have we got? Um, he's got the elbow lined up pretty flush with the navel. So I might just go sort of halfway in between. Um, Let's lengthen that upper arm quite a bit. Bring that down, bring it back out. And this is just sitting a little bit too far out for comfort. Okay. Which means we can now bring that elbow down as well. Now the lower arm you know what, I think I should just bring the freaking navel up. His torso looks really long anyways. 
I think I can afford to be slightly above that um, that navel line. Um, while I'm just I'm here just thinking about it, I might as well start making some space for where I'm eventually going to put the hips and pelvis. You effectively, yeah, whoa. Uh Obviously at some point I went and grabbed one vertice without grabbing the other. Rookie mistake. Always make sure that you've got all your vertices grabbed at the same time. Bam bow. I might just grab that back one as well. Okay. So you almost want that um, lower torso to look a little bit like a like a corset almost because it's the it is the it is the girdle. You I mean it is that um, that uh, let's bring up your muscles. It's this sort of like um, uh, the muscles sort of wrap around the base of the rib cage and the guts and just sort of hold them all in. But it's really it's just muscle holding that in. And it effectively operates like a corset operates. Same basic principle. <laughs> Guess what the corset was based on? Science. Okay. I am going to freak, like frequently come back to this character, look at it from a slightly different angle and go, okay, I need to make an adjustment here and I need to make an adjustment there and what do I need to do? now and I'll just constantly be be coming around it because now is the time to make those adjustments um this this is the ideal point to do that I don't really get to do that easily once I have some actual edge flow happening so I'm gonna effectively just be as picky as I want to be at this point because I can afford to do so Gosh, the upper, just freaking upper body and arms, they're so cool. So difficult to get right, but bloody hell, they're just really cool. Let's see. There's this interesting thing happening here where that upper arm fits into the, into the chest. And I'm just really struggling getting that happen. But maybe it's because I need to bring that out more. Possibly. Or to rotate it a bit more. Doesn't look right. All right, at some point I have to just stop and move on with the rest of my character, and I can I can fiddle a lot more later. Okay. Now the the forearm is so interesting. So you get this interesting thing happening where these muscles are sort of twisting around each other. Like you'll see that here, that muscle doesn't move a whole lot, but the muscle there is moving around it um, and that's because you've got this cool thing where you have a muscle on left and right there sort of like uh, wrapped around each other so it's actually going to be the opposite of what we have here where we have a muscle front and back we'll have one um, right and left and I might actually since this video is now up to 35 minutes I might stop here and we'll build out the rest of that arm and get into the pelvis and the hands in the next video.